All right, so in this video, we're going to design a hybrid coupler. So I'm in the ABS uh, environment right now with a schematic window open, and we're going to go to the T-Lines microstrip palette. We're going to add a substrate, and we're going to use a similar substrate definition that we've used before, a 19 mil thickness with a 4.2 relative permittivity. We'll make the conductivity 5.6 to the 7, the loss tangent 0 0.001, whoops, that's the thickness of the metal, 1.4 mils, the loss tangent 0 0.001, and we should be done. Okay, now we can start adding our lines. But first, we should do a calculation of how wide the line should be. Okay, so here is a picture of a branch line coupler. We see uh, 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 four branches. Uh, this is the hybrid coupler that we're going to be building. Uh, it's called a branch line coupler. It's a quadrature hybrid. We've got four input lines. They all have characteristic impedance of Z naught. We'll make this 50 ohms in our system. This, the four segments of the coupler are a quarter wavelength each. Two of the segments are Z naught, and two of the segments are Z naught divided by two, as you can see here. So we're going to go into our schematic and start building this. Since we only have two widths that we're going to use in the structure, I'm going to set a couple of variables. All right, so I added a variable that will be defined by our Z naught width and a variable for our Z naught length, a variable for our Z naught divided by two width and our Z naught divided by two length, and then the launch into the segment. All right, so let's go to line calc real fast. Tools, line calc, start line calc. We'll put that same substrate in that we just described. We're going to design this at, say, 3 gigahertz. Just arbitrarily chose that. And we know we need 50 ohms and 90 degrees. All right, this tells us 36.2 mils and 554.7 mils for the length, respectively. All right, let's do a similar calculation. We need a segment that has 35.36 ohms characteristic impedance. And you'll notice that even though the characteristic, it, it, the length uh, shouldn't have changed, uh, it does just a little bit because of the dimensions of the uh, width of the metal. All right, so we'll go back in. This tells us we need 62.45 mils. We'll just round that to 62.5 mils. And 539.6 mils for the length. For the launches into the structure, I'm just going to leave these at, say, 25 mils, just to give them a dimension. All right, so let's start by putting our launches into the structure. These are going to have a width of W1, 50 ohms, and a length of L launch. I'm going to just copy this and repeat it four times. All 
All right, now we need a T. W1 for the T is going to be W1, W2 will be W1, and W3 will be W2 in terms of the variables that we set. All right, so now we've got our T's in the correct position. You'll notice there's a little metal, there's a little notch uh, on the drawing that, note, that notes what pin one is. Pin two is the bottom pin, pin three is the uh, right pin uh, here. Uh, and so I've rotated the figures appropriately so that they are, so that the pins are in the correct place so that we're gonna have the widths with the correct uh, dimensions. All right, now with that, we can go ahead and add our branches. So we have two branches that are going to have a width of W2 and a length of L2. Then we have two branches that are going to have a length of W or a width of W1 and a length of L1. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stretch this out for just a moment and wire it up. Okay, lastly, I'm going to place some ports on the design. So we'll place a port up here. We'll leave, this will be port one. The port that goes through the branch immediately across from P1 will be labeled P2. This is the through port. The port just below that will be port three. This is the coupled port. And just below P1 will be P4. This is the isolated port. Again, we can put wires to connect these. Now, what this structure does is it evenly splits the signal between uh, that comes into P1 between P2 and P3, and ideally, it isolates the signal from going out of P4. Now, the signal that comes out of P2 and P3 are separated by a 90 degree transmission line, so they should be about 90 degrees out of phase relative to one another, and that's why they call this a quadrature hybrid or a quadrature branch line coupler. Okay, I did just discover that I should be making W1 uh, on these T's. It should be W1, W2, and then W1 on all the T's. Let's make that minor correction. Okay, if we've done everything correct, we should be able to pull this into a layout by going to layout, generate, update, click OK, and it should pull the coupler in into a layout view. All right, so we're going to stop there for this uh, lecture. In the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to run an EM simulation using ADS momentum on this structure. Uh, so we'll come up with an EM model, and we'll also compare it to uh, a simulation of the schematic model. For the time being, you can go ahead and save that layout. And you can go ahead and try to generate a view. You can try and generate a symbol view by going to Window, Symbol, and then generate it like we've done in past videos. Create symbol, and then you can tell it how your pin orientation is, and you can redraw it if you want to. 
All right. So we'll talk to you next time.